maybe other guys in 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 the mixed martial arts space. I mean, Chael Sonnen, I don't think is a good comparison because I think a lot of his material was was written and pre rehearsed. I just feel like Conor McGregor, when it comes to his articulation and his material and believing in everything that he's saying, I just think he's on a totally different level than Floyd Mayweather or anyone else. And I think aside from that forgettable shit show in Brooklyn, right. um, I think this was really a productive three or four days for for the notorious one, Conor McGregor. Uh, I agree. And, you know, I, I would say mission accomplished for both of these men. Um, and absolutely. I mean, when you get a guy in Conor McGregor who on day one had no idea what the format was going to be of that press conference, just kind of went in there uh, and, and winged it with his speech and everything and still killed it. I, I, you know, again, we, we ended up scoring, you know, e each day of the of the tour. Um, who right. won the press, you know, 10-9, 10-8, all that stuff. Um, and I still had Connor uh, coming out on top, 10-9, and, and on day one just because of, you know, how he was really getting inside Mayweather's head. I, I think Mayweather, that that's why this fight got brought together. He knew what kind of dynamo he had in Conor McGregor to help him uh, promote this fight. But I still don't think he really knew what Conor McGregor was capable of with a mic. Uh, did a phenomenal job of selling the fight, but more than anything else, he sold the fact that he is not there to participate. He is there to beat Floyd Mayweather. Right. He is there to destroy that man. Um, and he really believes it. And I think even for some of the most high-level boxers, going into a fight against uh, someone like Floyd Mayweather, despite them having tons more experience in the professional boxing realm, they didn't truly believe that they can beat someone like Floyd Mayweather. And that's the story of Conor McGregor. You know, forget about whether he's going to win or lose, whatever it is. I, I think the story of Conor McGregor and what's so inspiring about the guy is the fact that it doesn't matter what's going on around him, what he's competing in, uh, what kind of time you give him, what kind of chaos is surrounding him. He's always going to believe in himself. And he stays present throughout the whole process. He takes it all in, and he is sharp as a tack on that mic. Yeah, and even when there were some uncertainties early on with the format, I still thought his opening monologue in Los Angeles was outstanding and yeah. had a lot more meat than Floyd Mayweather's opening comments. Now, I will also say as someone who, believe it or not, has covered more Floyd Mayweather fights than Conor McGregor fights in my career, I thought Floyd was terrific in Los Angeles. I really do. I thought he stayed composed, which was certainly goal number one for him. I thought some of his material was pretty creative, actually. I just thought this was as good a Mayweather as we had seen in recent press conferences involving him. But all of mm. that said... The national masses jumping to award Floyd Mayweather a win in Los Angeles, I just thought it was a little bit premature, and I just thought it was a little bit of a reach. Like, if I'm really going to be asked for my World Tour scorecard, right? And thankfully, I wasn't on that set yeah. being asked by a producer for my World Tour scorecard, okay? But were yeah. I to be asked for one, if you want to go 10-10 for day one, I have no problem with it. But sure. in every radio interview I've done since, I said, if, you, if you're you telling me Floyd Mayweather beat Conor McGregor on day one, I— I just didn't see that as like a surefire Mayweather win. And then day two in Toronto, um, you know, was, was was Connor in a landslide. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. I, I'm now listen. I, I had it. Uh, we're we're, we're going to do the scorecard thing, okay? And, yeah, and for those it, who didn't it. see it, I did. I had a <laughs> ten nine Connor. I had ten eight Connor on day two, um, and then I had it uh, ten nine Mayweather in Brooklyn, uh, and then I had a ten nine Connor in London. Now, here's the thing: with all that in mind, you know, and we're going to get into this later, I'm sure, but. Um, Connor had some zingers, man. He did a phenomenal job, um, but I'm not sure he got in Floyd Mayweather's head enough to distract him from, you know, what he's supposed to do in that boxing ring. I, I don't know if that was enough, and I'm curious to get your take on it. If you think that Floyd Mayweather was rattled enough to where it's going to throw him off his game on August 26. Yeah, I would agree with you, and I know Dan Wetzel is probably going to have a lot to say about this. He doesn't seem to think that, that Conor McGregor was able to get any space inside of Floyd Mayweather's head. I do think that Floyd Mayweather is a master when it comes to putting on a poker face, and I don't think that there's any intimidating Floyd Mayweather. Uh, I don't think Gennady Golovkin could do it. I don't think Canelo Alvarez did it. I don't think Conor McGregor is going to be able to do it. I think there's just so much confidence when it comes to what Floyd Mayweather 
can do inside a boxing ring that nothing Connor yeah. does is really going to phase him. But I will say that as the fight gets closer and when they square off on August 25th and and Floyd continues to look at, at a naturally bigger man, you know, maybe some doubt creeps in when it comes to some of the unknowns that will be presented by a mixed martial arts fighter. I mean, you really, Floyd doesn't even know what type of stance Connor is going to be fighting out of to begin round one, right? right? And certainly there are some unknowns for Connor. I mean, Floyd could, you know, throw caution to the wind and come out aggressive, which he hasn't done in the past. I mean, I don't think Floyd Mayweather is going to change a whole lot, but there's a lot more film for Connor to study. I mean, what's Floyd looking at? So maybe if there's doubt for Floyd Mayweather creeping in, it's because he doesn't know exactly what Connor's going to bring to the table. Maybe he thinks, man, this is a this is a big welterweight, um, but or whatever they're fighting at, super welterweight, whatever it is, middleweight. But I don't know, man. I just don't think in terms of the mind games. I wouldn't say that Connor failed to accomplish what he set out to. Right. But I would I would tend to agree with you. He's not occupying any space inside Floyd's mind right now. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's the way I had it. And I think, you know, another thing that people are kind of discounting is the fact that, you know, here's a guy in Conor McGregor who is going to be much bigger than the southpaws that Floyd Mayweather has competed against. And perhaps he doesn't have that same level of boxing experience, um, you know, at all, but he still is a guy who can crack. It doesn't matter with a 4-ounce glove, a 10-ounce glove, whatever it is, he's probably going to be around 175 pounds on fight night and I know that Floyd has never fought anyone like that. Um, you know, Manny Pacquiao, a tiny, he's a he's a bloated 154-pounder that, uh, you know, w w had a s smaller reach than Floyd Mayweather. So Floyd, even in, that, in those fights, was still kind of the bigger or rangier guy. Um, and Floyd, really, I don't think he's ever weighed above 152 pounds for any of his boxing match, even at 154 pounds. So uh, I, I think he's going to be at a big, big size disadvantage against Conor. So when you fought at 155 pounds in the UFC, what was the most you walked into the octagon at the uh, following night? I think 174 was the heaviest, but typically I was about 172. Okay, so, so put and, on and, 17 pounds or so. Yeah, and Connor and I are right around the same size. He he might even be a tad taller, um, and I think we have the same reach, you know, 74 inch reach. So yeah, I mean that's that's a significant reach advantage as well. Would you also say on this world tour? that there seemed to be this underlying mutual respect on both sides. I mean, even though you had Connor calling out the Showtime guy, obviously, which I thought was one of the greater highlights of the entire <laughs> presser. But it seemed to me like whether it was Floyd, you know, laying respect at Dana White's feet or Connor saying something nice about Leonard Ellerby, it seems to me like Connor and Floyd, there's going to be a huge embrace after this fight. And I think both guys may be going forward in Hollywood or otherwise. I think they could really stand to not only help each other, but maybe collaborate outside the ring. I feel like there's there's a genuine respect here between the two combatants. I, I agree. Um, I, I definitely agree with that, despite you know the venom uh, that was uh, spit on that mic uh, back and forth. Uh, I do think there's a mutual respect. These guys are going to make each other hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, their brands are going to be bigger than ever. Their names are going to be bigger than ever. Um, and I think it's going to lead to a lot of other things for both of these guys. Um, and, you know, one thing's for sure is Floyd is on the out. Connor is, is still coming up uh, in the game. I think he will continue to fight in the UFC and bring in all the fans that he earns uh, from this fight against Floyd Mayweather, win or lose. Um, so, yeah, I mean, th these guys are really benefiting from this relationship, and I wouldn't be surprised to see these guys uh, pretty friendly after this fight. So one thing that I've been concerned about on the Conor McGregor side is that the contractual stipulations that prevent him from elbows or knees or kicks or any of that will give him pause when it comes to dirty boxing or infighting. And the reason I bring it up in the context of the world tour is because these guys were allowed to jaw at each other face to face at times without a third body anywhere near them, Kenny, because I think there is such strong language in the contract preventing Connor from striking Floyd or vice versa that yeah. neither of these guys is going to push the other for fear of losing 25 or 50 million dollars. It seemed like there were times where maybe Connor touched Floyd's hat or his head and, and Floyd right. was poking his finger right in Connor's eye. But big picture, Kenny. Am I nuts to be a little bit concerned that that Connor might have that in his head a little bit during the fight and and therefore maybe 
you know, not throw his head around wildly so as to cause a cut for fear that he might get docked 50 million bucks? You know, it's interesting. It's possible. It's possible. But I think that in Connor's head, um, I think he's actually using it to his advantage in a way in threatening uh, Floyd Mayweather and threatening Floyd Mayweather Sr. as well. You know, you heard that kind of back and forth on day one between him and Sr. And he was saying, you know what? If he doesn't respect my name, I may throw a kick. I may throw a knee. I may throw an elbow and cut him across his face. He wants right. that fear to be inside Floyd's head just in case, just to let him know I may do that and how that affects him um, during the fight. I mean, uh, boxers already think mixed martial arts guys are, are dirty or crazy and all that stuff. And I think the narrative for Conor McGregor was to push that to the next level and say, yeah, I am crazy. You you know, you don't know what I'm going to do in that case. I may throw a kick. I may, I may throw a knee. I may elbow you for no reason because, you know, you disrespected me. Those are the kind of things that kind of 